because it's a sunny day and the, the crocus, the genuine, real autumn crocus are opening nicely here in one of the sand beds. The, the contrast very well shown between the light and shade as the sun gets lower in the sky in autumn. Plenty of insects coming about to fertilise these beautiful little crocus. Cyclamen here as well, the, the leaves of cyclamen comb, you know, the flowers of cyclamen hydrofolium that are open just now. We move further up the bed, we move from different crocus, so there's crocus nudiflorus and there's two white va crocus valicola there. And that's all growing in the bed. If I turn around and look back, you can see the sun looking up the garden. The autumn colour is coming onto many of the trees. But it's mostly the crocus I want to go and look at. Molly, coming to see what's going on. Are you coming with me, Molly? So we'll go and have a look around autumn fruits big red fruits of the podophyllum. So we move round to another bed here, the, the pebble bed. More crocus. This is where we lost so many crocus to the mice, but they are starting to recover now. The mice can't dig through the cobbles, so get there. Over there, the leaves of the big umbrella leaves with another Colchicum, Colchicum autumnale album underneath. Under the leaves of the Eucomus Canadense growing there. Oops! Uh, stumbling about here. So let's move on round towards some of the other beds. Again going up past the troughs you can see the bright light. Here's the wee crocus. It's a group now, a seedling. We must have dropped a seed at some time and it's grown between the slabs and every year it comes up. It started with one and then more and more coming up. They've been battered as everything has in the garden this year by the rain. Cast my eyes quickly heavenward we can see it's a jet flies over. Back over. It's all sorts what's in the tray you might wonder. Well that's a box of um, Sanguinaria canadense. Some of the surplus of is waiting to get planted out up the garden. I took it out of the trough the other week. If you saw that bulb log, you'd have seen that. So another bed here, mostly fritillarias. Eh, not fritillarias. There are a few. One basket of fritillaria, but this is the erith one of the erythronium beds. The crocus nudiflorus, white forms, and the traditional forms. It's got in amongst it and now runs happily around this bed. Lots well, there, so and down you can see the Nudiflorus and Nudiflorus albus. And if we look down on these, this is um, different. This is Crocus speciosus with Crocus Nudiflorus. Up here we have, I'm in the light, it's a Crocus Cochi anus. Got that lovely little zone in the centre. This is a hybrid between Xanthylomus and Polchalis. Really pretty. So that's a wee group growing on the edge of the raised bed. You can see how the 
photographically it's di difficult with these sharp contrasts between light and shade moving round the Hypericum reptans continues to, to flower it's a big flower of the Formus speciosus hybrid chub comes that they do get battered but they've been particularly battered by Storm Alley that swept through with 80 mile an hour winds knocking everything in the garden about Crocus agrippinum or agrippinum however you might like to say it another group there and then various cultivars of Speciosum and Autumnale and various different forms popping up in this bed the Speciosum album over there Molly what are you hunting for in there? Come out of there you wee pest round here more cyclamen with this, this, this is nice silver leaved forms and they're seeding around there and if you read in this week's bulb blog you'll see I lift some of those germinating seeds out and pot them on elsewhere so if we turn round and back across this bed the Eucomus Eucomus bicolor nice leaves, lots of leaves but only one flower spike this year it flowered much better last year with more flower spikes and I suspect it will flower better again next year plants are just like us they're not always at the, on their best form all the time here's a nice little autumnal group the big crocus speciosus albus we've got some these are hybrids or they could be no, I think these are the hybrid rather than the pull chalices over there. Rowan berries that got blasted off in the storm. We come along the I particularly like the way they come up through the yellowing of the Roscoya leaves. So the whole mitch match of different autumn crocus and this side more silver leaved cyclamen as we come round there we get a mixture of autumn crocus and autumn col colchicums so more autumn colchicums here I see up there there's a you can tell from this distance that's the crocus bonaticus now let's spin round the bed Around here we've got, and we adjust to the camera, adjust to the shade. This is the beautiful forms of Roscoia purpurea that's been flowering since August. A primula flowering out of season. This is one of the ones I split earlier in the year and the clumps have all responded by growing and flowering so the rock garden bed opposite the bulb bed and if we look at the forms this is one form here of crocus speciosum really dark one notice the dark color of the tubes other forms if you see over there these forms are although that's not a pure speciosum often they have a lime green tube these ones have a lovely dark tube making them really stand out we can see that on the we come round to this group Colchicum speciosum album these wonderful goblet shaped flowers on these long lime green tubes they are fragile and easily blown 
down in the wind, but for the days they stand up, they are lovely. These are rather longer because they're here in quite deep shade at the moment. But it's nice the way the that primula is catching the light. You can see how there's been more culture comes in here. This is an area I've been doing a bit of digging on and working on. What I often find is things get hauled to the surface, especially the Dicentra cucularia. It flower it it likes to be just right under the surface. There's one there. That's where they like to be. This one there's been a scrape here. A bird or something scraped it so we can just cover it over. This bed will get another layer of mulch during the the winter before the spring comes. I already have piles that I've been cutting back and pruning and shredding so I make piles of shreddings in the beds and that will become the mulch. Oh, there's that there is the Cardiocrinum giganteum that was blown over. What can I do to show you this? Pull it up. It was blown over, it was standing beautifully proud until Storm Alley decided it wanted to smash it on the ground. Will it stand up? Oh, it's coming this way now. We'll just let it go back into that bush. We'll get the seeds later. The seeds will still ripen, but you can see it there lying now how it was blown over, ripped out of the ground in the wind. So just wondering, the mess that autumn makes doesn't bother me. I like to leave things to die down naturally. We have a lot of piles of shredded stuff as I'm still working, so this has been a work area. Wherever I look, there's another little group of crocus. So coming up, what do we got? Crocus pulchellus. Over here, another form of Culturecum speciosum. Look at that. That's a fairly dark one with a dark tube. Wide open flower with quite a wide, quite a white throat. You can see how they attract the insects. So I just scared that one away. Constant hoverflies coming to feed on the pollen. We just come round us up to the wards of the pond. I'm heading up to the new the new bed where planted out and this is where if, again in this week's bulb blog you'll see that I one of the pots of seedlings I took out was the crocus valicola. Here's a, one of the seedlings plant I just planted out yesterday. And it's growing in this bed and it's here because it's a plant from the crocuses and I've got a lot of crocus eh not crocus I've got a lot of erythronium curcasicum in here as well as Sibiricum and that. So these plants grow in similar areas. Crocus bonaticus, very distinct where the three inner floral part segments are much shorter. At one time it was called Crocus iridiflorus because it was thought to look like an iris and you can see that but Crocus bonaticus is the name we know it as now. A light form of nudiflorus. Whoops, as I stumble about. Trying to watch a camera screen and watch what I'm walking on is not always easy. So another Crocus bonaticus. Up there there's a mixture of Crocus bonaticus and Crocus nudiflorus. And there's more, ever more shoots coming through of all the other crocus and other things I've planted in here.
So if we move round and take the back bed, back area down. This is the area that I've been working on and opening up. I've been cutting back, I've opened up this whole section of wall here along where Molly stands, right into there. So you can see the rhododendrons are cut back. That's the one, that stem, I was going to dig that root out until I found this lovely little orchid that's self-seeded in down here. And again, regular readers will remember I showed you that. This is just a slab of wood I put there so I didn't forget and go and trample on the, the wee helleborine. So I'm really pleased and even more pleased to see that there's one seed pod forming on there so I'm hoping there'll be more of a colony. I've actually found one somewhere else in the garden that's seeded into a most unlikely place which I'll share with you in the bulb log sometime. So I think we'll just head off to finish there at this point, looking back up the garden, through the woods, the area of the, the wall that I'm working on. So the wall goes up, so I've now got all this area, which is much more open again. It's like, oh good heavens, aeroplanes and lorries or something going toot toot. They disturb me here. But they, looking back across there, I've got all that area to expand. I've been planting in here, so follow the bulb log www.srgc.net and click on Ian Young's bulb blog and you'll be able to follow me on my weekly diaries that I write. So thanks for joining me again on this walk. Sunny, windy autumn day in our garden. <laughs>